What's going on internet? IG here again. And um, I wanna start out this video and I realize that this isn't sort of typical to what I usually do. By the way, 60 frames a second, let me know what you think. Um, we'll sort out the lighting situation as we go. But so today's video, I wanna start out by telling you a little bit of a story about sort of background uh, in terms of how I started out in, in video using this medium. Um, so a long time ago, like, mid 2000s, uh, 2005, 2006, I got my first ever PC. And uh, I was so excited. I didn't really have much of an internet connection, um, but what I did have was a, a, a 30 day trial of uh, Sony Vegas Pro. Vegas Pro was my very first foray into a professional video editor. Now fast forward a few years, um, I'd been following some of the creative tools that Sony had put out for quite a while. and. I'm sure if I can speak to all of you audio people out there, you'll remember SoundForge Pro. It was one of those veteran tools that has been around for basically as long as digital audio editing has been around. And uh, so when, when a, a representative from Magix, which is a company that has acquired all of Sony's creative programs, Vegas, SoundForge, Acid, all of those programs, when, when a representative from Magix reached out to me and said, hey, do you wanna check out um, SoundForge Pro 12. We're pretty excited about it. It's been a while. Um, it's a new up-to-date release. Do you want to check it out for, and, um, and make a video about it? I thought, you know what? What's the harm? Let's check it out and, uh, and see what we've got. So that's what today's video is going to be. It's going to be me kind of showing you uh, what has happened since uh, since the last version of SoundForge Pro? And of course, if you're new to this channel, this definitely uh, isn't isn't my normal programming uh, of, of what I usually cover on this channel. But I'm hoping that if you're keen for a little bit of diversity on this channel, like I am, um, then you'll stick along for the ride. So definitely um, go out, go and check out the rest of the channel, see what I've got on offer there. Most of it revolves around open source software and Linux and that kind of thing. But I'm keen to jump into SoundForge Pro 12. It's coming out for release very, very shortly. Um, so yeah, let's uh, let's see what we can find and what this veteran of, of audio editors is up to in 2018. Okay, so this is what SoundForge Pro looks like. If you're familiar with SoundForge Pro at all, um, honestly, this is probably one of the Mac daddies or the granddaddies of all digital audio editors. So yeah, back in 2003, Sony acquired Sonic Foundry. Then they started being the ones responsible for the development of SoundForge. Uh, one of, yeah, like I said, one of the most venerable uh, audio editors out there. Now, I guess the first question I want to address right up front here is why would somebody even consider using this as opposed to something like um, Audacity? A lot of people that watch my channel, you probably are familiar with Audacity. You've probably used it at some point. Um, so why not use something like Audacity. Um, what I will say is that um, a lot of the benefits of using something like SoundForge Pro and especially version 12 comes down to the heritage behind SoundForge. Um, because of the fact it is a professional tool, it's had the, it's had the, um, it's had a foot in the industry for such a long time that uh, that all of the plugins and um, and external things that you bolt onto a program are going to much more readily support something like SoundForge Pro as opposed to Audacity. Case in point would be a lot of the VST plugins. So um, people out there, you know, using Audacity and wanting to use VST plugins, various VST plugins to um, to achieve different effects. Uh, in their audio uh, editing, they're very limited, and um, and if you you know kind of trawl through forums and stuff about people's experiences using VST plugins, um, it's it's a bit hit and miss with something like Audacity, which is fair enough. I mean, you can only expect so much from a completely free program. Um, now, SoundForge, on the other hand, definitely not a free program uh, in the slightest. It's a premium, uh, it's a professional program charged a premium price, um, but the support that you get for VST plugins is actually very very good. So. Um, you get VST version 3 support, um, you get native 64-bit, uh, in fact that's that's one of the headlining features of SoundForge Pro 12 is the fact that it's fully 64-bit now and that includes your VST plugins. Uh, so VST version 3 it's 64-bit um, and then you obviously get a lot more granular control over um, the, the effects that are actually built into it. So when you look through some of the processes and effects that you can do in SoundForge Pro straight off the bat, um, you're gonna notice a lot of shared ground here with something like Audacity. But 
I want to show you, I guess, that there is, um, and as you would expect, if you're paying um, a premium for this sort of software, you're going to get far more granular control and far more polished results from something like SoundForge, um, where people have been using this in the industry for uh, for years now, over 10 years, to um, you know to repair audio, to master audio for. Um, for publication and to you know hit certain standards uh, in different countries about what audio needs to sound like when it's being mastered to a CD or mastering a record, a record that sounded like an American a record, um, and so that's kind of where a lot of what uh, SoundForge Pro's uh, benefits come from. I guess the next question you might be asking is why would I choose to use uh, something like this? over um, a more complete digital audio workstation because what SoundForge Pro is not, it's not a multi-track editor, it's not a complete music making uh, studio, not in the slightest. This is a very uh, micro, uh, this is a very micro zoomed in approach to, uh, to audio editing. So that means you're looking at an individual clip, you're looking at one track, uh, it can have multiple channels, um, but you're looking at one track overall and, uh, and you get very, very tight control over the, the audio and especially the audio engineering behind it. Um, so yeah, like I said, repairing audio, mixing audio, mastering audio is probably what this program is best known for. So when you compare it to programs, digital audio workstations like uh, Ardour, like Logic, like Ableton, um, this is gonna give you much more granular control again over individual tracks. So it's also very good for uh, recording. So you, uh, again, because of, um, of how dialed in this, uh, this program is, so that's going to mean you know you can record your own loops to plug into uh, those programs uh, like Ardour or Logic or Ableton, um, and also it means that once you're finished with those projects in your digital audio workstation of choice, you can bring it into SoundForge and then uh, and master it so that it's actually meeting production standards for whatever you know whatever output that you're trying to achieve there. Um, so I guess then the question comes: Well, who would use this? Um, and ultimately, I think the best use case scenario that I can think of, um, definitely video editors would have uh, some something to gain from using something like this if they're wanting to clean up their audio. Their, um, some of the tools that they have in here with the, um, the declipper, dehisser, that kind of stuff is fantastic. Like some of best in class tools for, um, for uh, noise removal and uh, for cleaning up the audio to make it sound as crispy and delicious as possible. Um, and the other the other person I'm thinking of is uh, is podcast editors because of the fact they often deal with just one long lengthy uh, audio track. The ability to be able to jump into um, something like SoundForge Pro and uh, and be able to use you know very um, very high professional production grade um, plugins and all that kind of thing to get the best sound out of their audio would be something very, very valuable to them. And then obviously, of course, if you are a recording artist and you're publishing your own music, uh, then definitely you will love, absolutely love the mastering tools that are available here. Um, also out of the box, they uh, it's a bit of a value add in terms of uh, some of the plugins that they do give you. So a lot of the isotope um, plugins there, Elements and the RX series are all in there. Again, uh, they're fully 64-bit across VS2, uh, VST2 and VST3, which is nice. And also, um, yeah, like I mentioned before, the Sequoia effects of, uh, of D Clipper, D Hisser, uh, the D Crackler and the Wave Hammer 2 are pretty incredible. And then of course you've got all of the standard ones that are built into um, you, that are built into SoundForge that have been there for, for years now. Now, what I will say um, is I, I think what this program does well, and I, I realize I'm ballooning out here in time, so I'm going to wrap this up very, very quickly. But what I what I think SoundForge Pro is doing well, just on a first impressions and on, upon playing around with it for a couple of days, is that um, it, it is a very simple uh, it's a very simple program to get your head around. Um, you're only ever dealing with one window at a time. Yes, you can have multiple recordings uh, or multiple sounds, sound files, wave files, whatever, open at once, but you're only ever dealing with one track at a time. So it's simplicity and it's like laser focus on what you can do with the audio of that one track is very, very good. But some of the ways that you can visualize what's going on in the audio and being able to clean up and repair audio that way, whether it's you know transferring uh, tracks off of vinyl to a digital recording is pretty amazing. Amazing. Um, and then also something that's actually new to uh, to SoundForge Pro 12 um, is being able to do uh, to import and export uh, DSD for file formats. So um, basically, like high resolution 
um, high definition audio files uh, that are kind of optimized for you know the the new streaming media space now also the other thing that I think it does really well is performance the fact that this program it actually only needs I think uh, I think the recommended um, running I think the minimum system requirements are only like a gig of RAM, which is kind of stupid at this point. Um, and then obviously also the, the bundle of, uh, of the, um, the VST plugins that you get uh, as part of the package is quite nice. Now, what I think it could do well, gosh, it is badly in need of a new coat of paint. Um, it's interesting that SoundForge Studio, the kind of the baby brother of this program, uh, version, uh, I think it's version 12 that came out last year, released by Magix as well, since they took it on from Sony. Uh, that does have a bit of a coat of paint to it. It looks a little more modern than this one. This one still looks like we're kind of stuck in, yeah, 1998. So it'd be great to see a, um, a complete sort of visual overhaul. Uh, they're starting with some of the icons here, but it would be great to see that, that process continue because I think Magix uh, has got a fairly good sense of what looks good in, uh, in user experience design. Um, and the other thing is, is that if you don't really know what to do or what's going on, it's a bit hard to, uh, to keep yourself organized here in terms of once you've got a few floating windows going, um, if you come up here and go to window and then, uh, and then, you know, sort them all out, uh, you can kind of get them all going in a way that makes sense here. But if you don't really know what you're doing or where you're, where you're going, then obviously pr chances are you're probably not going to be using SoundForge Pro 12 in the first place. Um, but you do need to know how to stay organized and, um, and make use of some of the navigational tools like timers, markers, that kind of thing um, in order to stay organized. Um, but really, guys, at the end of the day, this is just a first look. Um, let me know what you think about jumping into... Um, into software like this and, and just kind of, you know, having a look around. Um, and again, shout out to Magix for, um, for hooking me up with this early so we could have a look at it. And I'll be very interested to see um, some of the other projects that come out of Magix in the future. As like I mentioned, they've got a hold of Vegas Pro, they've got a hold of Acid, uh, the, the digital audio workstation. So as a creative that likes making, uh, that, that has used, been using digital media tools for, for 10 years or more now, uh, it's really exciting to see some of the, the legends, some of the legacy uh, the legacy forming programs of, you know, decade ago, um, still alive, still making progress, uh, still developing and uh, yeah, still got some great potential there. So anyway, let me know what you think in the comments below. What is the audio editor of your choice and why? And also it gives, it gives a bit of context as well if, uh, you know, if you let me know what you do with the audio editor. Um, but yeah, that'll be all from me. See you guys in the next video. Peace out, ladies and gentlemen.